Hello there, and welcome to Bear Chats, otherwise known as a Q&A. So yeah, I'm here with my bear. I think my bear's name's Barry, or is it Colin? No, my bear's name's Colin. And it's really cold, so I'm currently in this little Daffy Duck blanket head thingy. And look, it's even got like little mittens. How cute is that? It's from Primark. So I'll take down the head bit just so it's not too distracting. So it wouldn't be a Q&A with Misha unless I was in my pajamas. And I thought, you know, I'll do it makeup free because today's video is talking all about mental health, positivity, confidence, everything like that. So I thought it makes sense to go no makeup and show that I'm comfortable to go au lateral. Because I mean, in all of my vlogs, I'm always there like, hello. Hello. But anyway, we're going to get along with this Q&A. So I asked on Instagram for some questions and I wanted to base it all around mental health, positivity, mindset, everything like that because you know it's a new year and the reason I wanted to do this video is because I do feel like it's such a taboo subject and although I'm not necessarily the number one person that knows exactly what to say, what to do, all about mental health, like it's such a, I feel like people think it's such a touchy subject and I myself have never experienced mental health in a way where it's fully affected my life. I'm just like every other person who has their down days and has their good days. So that's the experience I'm talking from. And this is ultimately why I wanted to team up with Better Help to film this video because I don't want to come on here and start preaching and talk about how you should feel better and how you should do this and how you could do that. Because I know it's not that simple, I know it's not that easy. So I want to always talk about my experiences and talk about how I keep a positive and happy mindset. But Better Help is basically an online therapy tool. So you can sign up online and you basically can just chat to a therapist that you're matched up with. So you like go through the whole process, you say how old you are, you say your gender, you say your beliefs, like what you're most worried about, what you're most stressed about, everything like that, and they match you up with someone. So I got matched with a lady called Kimberly. So the reason that this is such a great platform is because I feel like most people wouldn't go to therapy. Like it would be such like a no, 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 no. Only people with real problems go to therapy. Like I feel like everyone's in that sort of denial. Whereas I feel like every everyone could do with talking to someone to talk through their problems because we all have problems like everyone even blimmin rosy posy mosey the girl next door to you or the guy who thinks who you seem like they have a perfect life trust me they will have things that they need to discuss they will have stresses in their life that they need to get off their chest and that's why i think it's so important it's also brilliant because it's so inexpensive it starts as low as 35 dollars a week which is what like 20 something pounds and if you think about how much it is to go and see a therapist but well, that's another reason why people never go because it's so darn expensive but you don't even need to leave your house you can literally just message them through the website and theoretically it's like a 24 hour service because obviously you just message your therapist and then they message you back when they see your message if you catch my drift and also if you don't like the original person that you're paired up with you can switch you can change whoever because i feel like again that's something it's very specific like if you're going to tell someone about your life you want to feel at ease with them you want them to be the perfect person for you to deal with and maybe said person that you got originally isn't quite your cup of tea then you can switch and change so i will leave a link down below to better help i just think in making this video not only am i spreading awareness but I hope to like help some people and I'm not a pro so I'm not gonna be able to do that so I thought I'd leave that to the professionals because everyone on the site is authorised, a little specific in a field so I know the Kimberly who I was matched up with deals with stress and things like that because ultimately that is my problem, I can't deal with stress. But anyway we're gonna get on with this video and I'm gonna answer all the questions. So I wrote them down in my little book. So first question is how to stay positive. Now, as I said earlier, we all have our good days and we all have our bad days. And I feel like it's so much easier to say, do this, do that. But if you're in a down mood, like you're in a down mood, what I try and do, or what I actually do find quite helpful, is going to the gym and having like my own headspace, putting headphones on, listening to music, and just kind of drowning out the world. And I know it's kind of drowning out your problems, but 
in that moment, I feel like it puts me in a better headspace and then I can attack the problem with a much better mindset because, I mean, some days you wake up and you're in an amazing mood and some days you wake up and you're not in the most amazing mood and for me, that does happen and I'm sat there and I'm like, why am I in a bad mood? I have no reason to be in a bad mood. But it's just like your hormone levels, your endorphins, everything like that, like it can't be helped. And also what I try and do is always like remind myself that it's not necessarily because anything's going wrong in your life, it's just that today your brain isn't quite up to scratch as it was. I am an incredibly positive person and I feel like I only really emit positivity on YouTube because that's what I aim to do. Like I don't want to come on here and talk about my problems necessarily because you guys don't really want to hear about them and I don't want to spread negativity and breed negativity because social media is already a reasonably negative platform. Obviously I do like to show some of it because I want to still show that I'm a real person and my life isn't perfect and I experience problems just like everybody else but I try to do it in a way that I'm like looking back on what's happened and now seeing it in a positive frame of mind. So the next question is how to deal with stress, what I do to chill. Now that is my main 101 problem. I am the most stressy person on the planet. To be fair, more recently I've actually had like real reasons to stress and I know you're probably sat there thinking like, oh my gosh, she has no reasons to stress. Trust me, we all have reasons to stress in life and I'm the person that heightens that reason by a thousand and makes it a million times worse, but I just can't help myself. I am so like over the top, I am so upbeat, I am so jumpy and I feel like that works in a positive way because it puts me in a really positive mood but then also when I have a problem, when I have a stress, I fixate on it and I get really wound up and I stress myself even more. So ultimately I don't know how to deal with stress and that is why Better Than Help is brilliant because you can discuss with your therapist how they best feel that you should deal with stress. One thing I do do to like chill out is do a YouTube video. Now you're probably thinking, like, what? If you're in a bad mood, you, you film a YouTube video. If you're stressed about something, you film a YouTube video. But it's a bit like going to the gym. Filming a video is like escaping reality. It's just me and the camera, which sounds really weird, because to me, I'm picturing that I'm speaking to someone, I'm speaking to you guys, but obviously I'm not actually speaking to anyone. But I think it's again nice to have your own mental headspace. Obviously I spend so much time with other people, like my mum, me and my mum are together 24 seven, but sometimes I do like to take myself out of the situation. If I'm not in a great headspace, if I'm really stressed, and just be by myself. Another thing I always used to do that I used to love would be to do my makeup. So I would literally sit there for like an hour and just do my makeup. Absolutely no reason to it. It would just be like my relaxation, like my de-stress. I do feel that chocolate helps with stress. They say chocolate increases, is it endorphins? I can't remember. But basically yes. I do think the eating a square or two or the bar of dark chocolate when you're dealing with a stressful situation is always a good idea. One thing I really want to get into in 2018 is meditation and like learning how to fully like take control of my stress because this last like two weeks like a lot of things have been going wrong that are like reasonably important like I'm not just it's not like oh I broke my hair straighteners oh my eyeliner wasn't evil like there was actual things that couldn't be helped and I couldn't actually do anything about them and that's my issue when I don't have control of a situation and I don't know how I can fix it that makes my stress worse because I need to know a solution then I won't get stressed because if I know there's a way out of it then there's no need to stress but if I don't and it's down to somebody else fixing the problem then I'm a wreck basically and I hope doing this video like shows to you guys that we're all normal like we all have issues it's just how we deal with those issues and that's what I want to learn like we can't stop issues from happening we can't stop stressful situations from happening in our life we just need to learn how to deal with them at least I do next is how do you get out of bad habits now when I think of bad habits I'm trying to think of any that I have and I know that one bad habit I have is this bad boy I will so easily just pick up my phone and get distracted by social media and yes it's my job so it's important for me to be on it a lot 
but I know that like I could just go on Instagram now and accidentally spend about 15 minutes sat on Instagram and obviously I'm not doing any harm doing that but then I'm wasting my time and I'm not being productive so yeah I need to stop getting distracted like I will be going about my day being really productive and then suddenly I'll just sit down for about 15 minutes and I'll just waste my time and then I'm like if I added all the times I did that in a day up I could fully do like an hour of meditation or something like I could be it's counter it's counterproductive when I sit on my phone I'm not losing anything but I'm not gaining anything so that is one bad habit that I need to break and I try my hardest like when I'm in bed in the morning I'll wake up and the first thing I'll do is accidentally end up sitting in bed for half an hour on my phone yes I am checking emails and stuff like that but I'm also looking at Instagram Facebook Twitter that whole malarkey so I'm trying to force myself to wake up and not even get my phone into my hand I'm just get up and start doing stuff and then maybe go to the gym and then look at my phone when I'm at the gym. Inevitably I end up getting dressed and flicking through my phone as I'm doing it or like walking and I'm going on my phone but it's fine. I do feel like you need to replace bad habits with a different habit. I always felt like when I was eating if I accidentally got into a bad habit with maybe like an unhealthy food that I was eating I would create a better habit. So say you really got into having desserts, maybe it's not the healthiest thing to do to be having cake every night, you'd then swap it in for fruit and yogurt because that's still a habit and you're still getting that sweet tooth but you're not necessarily having a bad habit, it's a positive habit if we get what I mean. I do feel like that is the thing though. What you don't really realise something becomes a habit. Like I don't even realise my habits because I just do them because they're that generic. They're that like automatic. Like the other day I was making a protein shake and you know when you fully zone out, like you fully zone out and you just don't even know how you did something. I genuinely made a whole entire protein shake and didn't even recall doing it, didn't remember doing it, could have put about 70 scoops because my mind was other places and I was just, I was away with the fairies quite literally. This one I thought was quite an interesting subject and it was, have you ever been heartbroken? Now I've said before how I've had, I'd say I've had like one proper boyfriend, but I don't think I was heartbroken in the situation with it ending. I think it was more of like a heartache. I actually don't think I've actually ever had my heart broken. I was saying this to mum the other day, mostly probably because I never fully, like I am that person that's like a little bit reserved, which you'd never guess from me. You'd think I'm like the most like jump into a relationship sort of person, but I'm so not. And I feel like I've more been heartbroken by friends leaving me than necessarily like boys. Like I think, and I don't think friends have either, but I think friends have been much closer to the line. And I don't mean like, oh my gosh, they they suddenly hated me as a best friend. I'm more like, just when you think someone's got your back and then they end up not having your back. Which isn't necessarily how you think. Like, I think people think of heartbreak being relationship-wise. But I think family, friends, like, they're the most important people in my life. So if they were to do something, that would hurt me more than anybody else. My family are obviously the absolute amazing dream team and I absolutely love them to pieces and I, I I know they would never do anything to break my heart or to hurt me. But then I also feel like a lot of things in life, we go around doing things and we don't actually realise we're hurting people. Like we don't stop to think about it. So I've probably hurt so many people without even meaning to, which is a horrible thought but that is the way of life, like you do things and they have repercussions and you don't even think about it, you don't even realise it. Okay, I love this next one, it's how to deal with negativity. Now, as I said, social media is a very negative world and there's a lot of negativity in this world. I think our generation, or my generation anyway, is a really negative generation, which is horrible because it shouldn't have to be. As kids grow up in this generation, like I am worried what my grandkids or what my kids are gonna be like because of the way that people are nowadays. I'm not someone that's really that affected by negativity if I don't know the person, but negativity on social media and like negative comments, in person, online, whispers through people's ears, everything like that 
it doesn't really affect me anymore. I used to be the most sensitive soul on the planet. I used to get so upset by stuff like that. But as I've aged, I've just kind of realized that it doesn't matter. And these opinions of other people that have nothing to do with your life, they don't understand your life, they don't know your whole entire life, they're irrelevant, like they're absolutely irrelevant. You can't let somebody else's opinion stop you from being who you are or acting a way that you wanna act. So I am lucky in the way that I do have a very thick skin because I know some people aren't like that. But if you're not like that, just don't acknowledge it. Like, if something pops up, if a negative comment pops up on my YouTube, if it's got swear words or it's got profanity or it's something rude, I will delete it. Not because I want to hide from the fact there's negativity, not because I'm annoyed at the comment, not because I'm upset, but because I A, don't want to share the negativity, I don't want somebody else to read that comment and then start, like, defending me and being like, how dare you say that because then they're sharing the negativity and they're thriving off what that person wanted. If someone is negative towards you, they want you to react, they want you to get upset. Whereas if you don't, you're the winner at the end of the day and that negativity hasn't worked and you've turned it into a positive outcome because you've proved that you're not gonna get upset by it. So, dealing with negativity is a mindset, I think. It's easy to say we should all learn to deal with it because it is part of life, but theoretically we shouldn't have to. What we should really be looking at is how we can eradicate negativity. That's a big word, Misha. But isn't it true? It's bad that it's come to this day and age that negativity is like acceptable, like it's okay to be horrible in this day and age. And I aim to teach my children, when I eventually do have some, to be positive, to emit positivity, to not go out of your way to hurt someone. There's one thing accidentally doing it, there's another thing fully either keyboard worrying or whispering or gossiping and I'm a girl. I know that we are gossipers, that we like to have a natter. I can't tell you if boys are the same, I wouldn't know. I am a girl, but yeah, I do think girls together can get quite catty, and I know that entirely, but I think it's one thing saying it between people that you trust that won't go out and tell anyone, and another thing saying it to the person, saying it online, and I know they say that you shouldn't talk about someone behind their back, but if you've got something that you really need to get off your chest, so yeah, they always talk about like women empowerment and working together and being a team, and I do think that we do need to have, we do need some of that, because us girls can be catty, like we can be mean, and yeah, it's not very nice. The next one is quite a positive one, and it's how do you always smile? Now, from a young age, I've always been known as smiley. Like, I remember reading my year two or year three reports, and I was, it was always like, Misha's always smiling. I can't help it, like, I'm just a smiley person. But I do think that's a good thing, because I know it sounds really bad. When you're in a bad mood, or you're in a bad place, and things are going wrong, if you go out into the street, and you put on a smile. I know you're pretending, in a way, to feel much happier than you are, but having that mindset to almost like force yourself to smile, I do think your brain ends up catching up eventually, eventually. So if you, if it's like if I'm filming a YouTube video, if I'm in a bad mood, I don't wanna seem like I'm in a bad mood in a YouTube video, so I won't put on a mood, but I will put on a brave face basically. And then in doing that, my brain catches up and then I feel like I'm in the same mindset as my smile. Like you end up working with it. Even if there's not necessarily a reason to smile, it's an easy thing to do. It's easy to smile. It's so easy. And you know, get those muscles working. One thing I do always try and do is look forward to something, like something, even if it's so far away, even if it's the smallest little thing, to look forward to something gives you a reason to smile, it gives you a reason to deal with your problems so you can get to that thing, so you can have that enjoyment. And I think with my life, all you guys will really see is like the sit down videos and then like a vlog when I'm going away somewhere. So it probably seems like I do that a lot, which I am I am very lucky, I do travel a lot. 
but the reason I do is because in between I am at home and I basically either I'm at home or at the gym and I don't do anything else and I'm just working. Like I'm flat out editing, recording, emailing, doing everything. Like my life is either 100% because I'm away or 0% in the way that it's like exciting and like crazy things are happening. And I think that is quite difficult in the fact that there's no like happy medium, it's either like 0 to 100. But I don't mind doing that because I know that when I get to the place or the occasion or the activity or whatever it is, I've worked A, my butt off to get there and B, I can really enjoy it because I've earned it. The next question is about anxiety, which I think kind of links in with stress. I feel like a lot of stressy people could be anxious as well. Now I am no pro and that's exactly why I wanted to team up with BetterHelp to film this video because I can't give you advice on how to deal with your anxiety. I, I don't know your anxiety, I don't necessarily know you and it was heartbreaking slash heartwarming that so many of you actually messaged me like saying about how you've been dealing with mental health and this and that. And it's heartwarming that you trust me to confide in me, but it's also heartbreaking that so many young people and so many people in this world are facing anxiety, depression, like everything. Like it's absolutely crazy. And it honestly breaks my heart that so many people are having to deal with that. And that is ultimately why I wanted to film this video so that you can speak to the people at Better Health and you can actually make a positive change because watching my video if you are dealing with mental health problems if you're dealing with anxiety if you're dealing with stress i'm not going to solve your problems like i'm i can't even solve my own problems i'm just discussing it so i can share how i see it and i quite enjoy these chats because i feel like it's a chance for me to really like get across the person that i am deep down a lot that you see is all happy go lucky go bubbly and that is entirely me but i do have a brain on my shoulders and i do have opinions and i do have a reason behind what i do and a message and i want to share positivity but it's also important to touch on the negative side of life because we all deal with it and a lot of people see all youtubers they just assume they have the perfect life and i think i actually got that question and in a way i do i i have an incredible life but i wouldn't say it's perfect i don't think anything in life is perfect and i don't think anything in life needs to be perfect to be amazing which sounds so cringe i know but nothing goes perfectly and if it did then A, that'd be weird, and B, you wouldn't appreciate the good in your life. I know it's really sad that you need to have the negative to be able to enjoy the positive, but it is true, life is such a roller coaster, and when you are at your pits and your lows, it can feel like the end of it all. It can feel like the end of the world. But how I see it, is you're then gonna also have the rise. Like if you're gonna have the fall, you're gonna have the rise. It's yourself that needs to pick you up from that fall. Perfection is so overrated. The life that we live is not necessarily the life that we put out to social media. And I try to touch on this on my Instagram. I try to talk about body confidence and about like the reality. Like I'll post a photo on a Saturday night of me in a night outfit. Am I going on a night out? No. But I'm not trying to pretend that I am. I'm just using an image that's relevant to the time frame. Today is Sunday. Yesterday it was Saturday night. And I spent my night editing and doing work. Then the Friday before, I did the same. I may post a photo on Instagram, but that doesn't actually mean I am. And I think that's the thing. I know when I'm posting it that I'm not pretending to be somewhere. I'm not pretending to do something. But a lot of people just see the image and take it on face value. They don't think like, oh, this was shot like 10,000 years ago. And people paint a picture of your life, especially when you put your life out on social media. People paint a picture and they put A to C and D to F. They miss out the in-between. Like they don't see the complete story. And that's why it's easy for people to assume that someone has a perfect life. But in actual fact, they don't and they you, you wouldn't know that and I think that's probably why people assume because I don't put out the negativity because I don't want to that 
it is perfect, but my, my life is amazing and I'm so incredibly lucky. And I can't believe how lucky I am. So the last question I'm going to discuss is a really, really lovely one to end on, and that's why I picked it. So, is it empowering to have such a supportive mum? This Q&A is now going to turn into a Mama Grimes appreciation moment. So, I cannot put into words how much my mum has changed my life. And I'm not talking paid for things or bought me this or given me that. I'm talking about the emotional strength, the emotional backing, the emotional support. And I think that's where family is so important. And I know that not everyone will have that. And it genuinely breaks my soul that not everyone gets to have a relationship with their family like I do because my family fight, they bicker, we argue, we hate each other sometimes but they've got my back and they will support me no matter what my mum obviously included my mum is honestly my biggest fan like if you ever meet her you are one lucky person because I've never and I will never meet anyone like her in my life She's just a whole nother breed. Like, we think I'm extra and we think I'm weird. That's because of her. Because I'm a mini, dulled down version of her. And she, I know everyone says this, but she would genuinely jump off a cliff into a burning hot furnace to look after me, to support me. And I wouldn't be anywhere where I am with YouTube if I didn't have her. And she's that person that's like, oh, you've got this many subscribers today, and you've got this today, and you've got that. And she obviously still does have her bad days, but she is so incredible at being positive all the damn time. All the damn time. And because she's that way, it then obviously influences me to be that way. I think a vital part of your mindset is the people that you share your life with. So if you are in a situation where you are surrounded by negative people, and I know this was a question, you're surrounded by negative people, that's not going to do anything for your mental health. That's not going to do anything for your mindset. You need to remove yourself from that situation. And I know that's so much easier said than done. And maybe when you're in that situation, you don't even realise that it's having a negative impact on you. Because you know you always hear about, oh, they were a good kid and then they fell into the wrong crowd. You always hear that being said. I don't think I ever went through that stage. Or did I? I don't know. Who knows, maybe we'll ask mum. But again, that's part of growing up, falling into the wrong crowd at school. Like that's, that's part of it. I feel like everyone has their rebellious stage, apart from me, who has never rebelled a day in their life. I think part of the reason I'm so lucky with my family, and especially my mum, is they've brought me up as an adult. They've brought me up as an equal. They've brought me up as their best friend, not only as their daughter. So... I am a million percent going to do that with my kids. I want to treat them like they are the same as me, like they are equal to me, not that there's a hierarchy, because I know sometimes that will work with families, but for us, it definitely wouldn't. So my camera just told me my memory card is full, so I'm going to shut up, but I hope you enjoyed this video. Please check the description box for the link to better help, and yeah, have a great day. Toodle pip, and bye guys.